The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 64, NASDAQ up 8, S&Ps up 7.5, gold contract up $2.10 at $15.08 an ounce. We get silver down 4 cents, $17.84 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 39 cents, $58.52 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year down two ticks, 129.17. 30 year up one at 160.17 and king dollar. King dollar up 323 ticks at 98.170. King dollar. The bulls and bears now. We're going, we're going on the, well, we're in the 11th month, the 12th month of fighting about uh, two or three points. Last October, bottom line is that you're at 96, 97. We've been fighting over this area for a long period of time. Euro, euro is at a buck ten. The yen is at 108, and the pound is at 124 to one U.S. dollar. So let's go over to uh, good old Roku. We we're just talking about Roku here. So uh, R O K U, I think. Right? You are correct. Yeah. So let's just see what this is doing here. It's technically first, then we'll give you a couple uh, updates of what some of these analysts, uh, uh, one, uh, one in particular, evidently. So uh, it's coming back to fill the gap. Okay, so Roku, Roku's gone from uh, 176 to 121. That's <laughs> that's pretty intense. In, it sure uh, is. 12 man. days. It better be a heads up. That's yeah. Three, six, nine, ten days. September so ten nice. trading days. Yes. You know, you get you get a gap out here. Well, let's see. So we had an ABC down, right? Let's see. That was 34 million, and you take it out with 38. Okay, so that was a small ABC down. That's 176. To 139, so we get what 44, uh, 46 points, right? Which we get you. Oh, that's interesting. So that's 108, and yeah, you're going to the gap. 103 is the gap. So what, what are they saying about it? Yeah, that, you had that, one analyst, right? We'll see what they have yeah. load up here. Um, well, first you had on Wednesday. Here, I'm just going to jump back because I had the articles up yeah. there just on CNBC. Right. Let's see where we're at here. So on Wednesday, you had this, um, which one are we on? Here we go. This is going to be an analyst saying the streaming devices are going to zero. So you already have direct TV. I'm just trying to find because we have multiple um, articles up here. The direct TV for their Xfinity Plus customers. Here we go. So Comcast, not DirecTV, yeah. Comcast is going to be giving their Ex Xfinity Flex streaming boxes to its internet-only subscribers. They used to charge $5 a month for that. Okay. So they're just giving you the box that you need to stream, and that's what Roku sells. So how are you in a business where you're trying to sell something right. that providers are giving away for free to be on their service, right? Which makes sense. So that's one article out there. And of course, once you have the box, you can be on any part, any streaming that you want. It just happens that you're, you're paying them for the internet, right? You know, I believe so, but I don't right. know what this box is. Okay. You know, yeah. I, I don't. Right. Maybe that's where, maybe they've tweaked this box yeah. before they gave it away for free. Okay, right. right? I'm just uh, guessing that might be yeah. the case. But also, I'm guessing that, yeah, you might be able to get Netflix and YouTube and something like that. Right. Maybe, maybe you don't have the selection of choices, though, that you do have on a Roku or something like that yeah. that's very easily loaded or, or comes preloaded. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Roku. It's always befuddled me a bit as this stock has skyrocketed, saying, you know, the same thing. Amazon has their Fire Stick, right? right. I mean, I don't want to be in the business with competing with Amazon's Fire Stick just on the uh, uh, set-top box. Um, so this one analyst, we'll get to the headline because it's pretty, you know, initiates Roku with a sell, cost of streaming devices going to zero. And, you know, you look at that chart, man, to jump back. Yes, we jumped away, but it's, that's all right. We can put it right back up. I think I have it up here, right, as well. Yeah. So here's a little bit longer time frame, man. We went back like six months. You go back to December of 18, and you're sitting at 26 dollars up to 176. <laughs> so there's this gap you were just looking at, yeah. right? But man, there's this gap yeah. when it took off. That's right. There's this gap when it took off the first time, 
you know, it's been a nonstop run from um, almost 12 months, right. right? 26 to 180. Let's see what kind of revenue they take in here. So when you're just selling, I'm with you. It's it's it's, it's oh, it's intriguing, but they've been paying up for it evidently. So yeah, okay, they're losing they're, money they're across still, the board. They're still in a loss though. Yeah, big time. So they're taking in a billion a year, 1.1. But guess what? There's just losses going forward. And so it's interesting that they have revenue from quote unquote platform versus players. So they are okay. monetizing when you're in there, which would make okay. sense, right? Maybe they have advertising once you're within the put the yeah. set, set top box. Okay. We'll have to get some interviews or somebody that can break down exactly how they make their money because they're made, they're pulling in revenue, man. Right. And they're growing. And they're growing, but they're losing money across the board. And if right. they're going to be losing money and they're going to be competing with the likes of Comcast, Amazon, and Apple, you can't lose money and compete with them. No. Because they can lose a lot more they money have a lot compete more with money. you. Exactly. Let's get over to the gold market from one of our tigers and take a look at uh, First Majestic. So First Majestic is AG, folks. This is a silver mine. The low for the year is 459. The high is 1162. And... Most of these came back to you, breakout area. They did it with lighter volume. You're going to see that three months ago, the stock's trading at 549, goes all the way up to 1162. This is, this is, this is really a highly volatile stock. I know. I was going to say, you want to talk about volatility? We'll get some volatility again. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So, let's see. Um, okay, so the question is, is it close to bottom? And, yeah, I think, they, to, to me, all these gold equities actually did basically bottom out. I think we're going to have to build some cars right now. You can see, now, it would have been sweeter, like, on this, well, you can argue two different ways. What I like to see is that I like to see it come right back to the breakout area, which is, in this case, is $7.90. But this had such strength, when it broke out, it only, it, it went to the third day up, which is still the highest volume day, which is 920. You had 11.5 million shares. You went into that with 5.9. And then, what you did do, which is, this was a big day on uh, Wednesday. You can see all, all, most of the equities in the gold market did this. They had volume, yet they couldn't break their lower swings, and basically by the end of the day, they were actually pushing higher. So my take is that I don't expect these things to go rocket right back up. I expect it's going to frustrate people for two or three weeks, go sideways, drive people crazy. You know, it's it's a normal type of market. That's how that's how these kind of things kind of normally shake out. Yeah. Uh, if we go into the uh, gold market itself and we take a look at it, what you're going to see is that it's basically a set up the same type of pattern. Um, you know, we've already been going sideways for uh, what's that? Five, almost ten, ten trading days right now. Uh, it's done its work. You know, it's tested. It has lighter volume on the test, and we'll see whether, you know, the next leg kind of get uh, some action. That, that dollar, <laughs> dollar index, man, I'm telling you, um, it's, it's just amazing. You know, when I did a gold workshop the other night, right, look, watch this, folks. This is absolutely amazing. So I was going through every major currency, and the only major currencies that gold is not at higher price is the Swiss franc and the U.S. dollar. And it's pretty impressive. I was watching the webinar. I was, it's reading, pretty I was like, don't forget the, the, when you were like the Swiss franc, I was like, don't forget about the dollar, because that's a lot, right? It, no. It's a lot. Yeah. And as soon as we come back, I'll share these folks. It's impressive, man. I mean, it's like, no matter what country you're in, you know, if you were buying gold, you scored in a huge way. Um, I'm going to put up the Aussie dollar here for a second. You'll see how dramatic it is in the Aussie dollar. It's like pretty amazing. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk.
risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. And we were talking about the aspect of uh, basically how strong gold has been against currencies in the world. Now, what we have up here now is the Swiss franc. So yeah. it's the Swiss, well, Swiss franc and the U.S. dollar yep. that gold is not at new highs. And that, those are the only major currencies right, that yeah. uh, in, in the world. That I, sorry, Jim. I was just going to eventually get back to that Aussie dollar because the chart never loaded for them. You oh, pulled that, it yeah, up yeah, for me at the break. A -U -A -U -D. I, what do you see this, yeah. folks? This is like amazing. Um, a lot of them are amazing, it's actually. taking a sweet time. There you look go. Look at this. So you got a weak Aussie dollar. That's going to cause the price in relation to gold when priced in Aussie dollars. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. And, you know, our... So when, when our all-time high was at, like, the 1970, yes. Aussie dollar was 1827. Yes. And then last month, you hit... 2307. Yeah. So, I mean, 1827, not far off from our high of 1920, 1927. And the equivalent to it, yes. Right. So when, you, when currency for currency at that point. Currencies were equal, right. as in right. if the U.S. dollar was still just as strong as, in this case, the Aussie dollar, right. then you would see gold trading at 2300 or so um, right. dollars, yeah. So w watch this. There's something that I haven't figured out yet. Maybe we can, we can all get a collective mind put together on this. Not, not, on, not on this one here. This one here is the Canadian dollar, but I yep. just want to show you the Canadian dollar. So the, the Canadian dollar, folks, the all-time high uh, was approximately prior to this, 1902. Yes, Canadian, 2011 yeah. high in gold. And then it hit 2066. Okay. Okay, so now watch this one. This is my, I'm trying to get my head wrapped around this one, and I, it's, not, it's not there, that's for sure. Oh, no, no, I didn't want to do it that way. I still wanted to, okay. So, you know, I, I've talked plenty about the aspect of when you have different countries. Like when we had the run from 2002 up to 2006, what had happened is that there was plenty of uh, Canadian companies, large gold companies, right, that were not performing. Okay. And what people didn't take into account for, and it was really wild, is that the reason that 
they were getting hit is that their expenses were going up astronomically sure. because the Canadian dollar got so strong. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to reverse this. So, I, you know, when you're buying South African equities, the bottom line is that their expenses are in Rand and they get paid in U.S. dollars, right? So I can't quite figure out why these, you know, like Harmony is pretty good, but it's not certainly, it's at lows versus highs, right? So when I look at the Rand, I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, well, this is kind of weird, man, because the 2011 high in Rand dollars was 14,742. Yes. All right? Now we're up at, it hit 28,000, double. Yeah. So I'm saying to myself, okay, there, like, here, let's bring up Harmony. So if you bring up Harmony, this is strictly a South African company, okay? They have 32,000 employees. They get paid in Rand. They get, uh, pay, they, the employees get paid in Rand. They, the revenues in dollars. Thank you. Okay. And you know, listen, it's, it's a good looking chart, but it's nothing like if, if, if that, the effect of the expenses versus, you know, where, where it is right now in Rand dollars, it would seem that, you know, they, they should be a lot higher and they're not. Yeah. That's, you I know. mean, they can hedge a lot, right? There's so many factors that go oh, into there is, how but that plays. Oh, there is, but you know, yeah. but if we can get any ideas, let me know, man, yeah. because that, that, that to me was glaring when I was doing the webinar. Sure. You know, I said, hold it, man. You know, that should be, you know, a lot more. Yeah. Pretty, it's pretty, it's, and what, what you know, you, the thing that's amazing, you can take the, you know, even if we take the yen, which is, you well, know, now people, we're on, now people, we're on Harmony. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Which is, you know, the people, you know, they consider the yen a very strong currency and, you know, a currency that they will go to in safety. But even the yen, when we bring this back, is you're going to see that that even... Yep, we just peaked out above. Yeah. And this is, the yen's totally different anyway, because it's like, if we go back to 2000, is that 2000? Yeah, 2011. First, we were at 149,000 yen. Yeah. Then it went to a higher high of 158,000 yen. Yeah. And then this month, we hit 166,000. Yeah. You know? So, you know, we'll see where the whole baby goes, but the point more than anything is that if you are in those countries and you had bought gold in your currency, well, you're in, you're in really good shape, you know, sure. really good sure. shape, no doubt about that. Yeah. You know? The um, king dollar, that's still battling out there. Let's go take a look at some of the high. Oh, yeah, because we get uh, option expiration today. Quad witching, yeah. right? Quarterly yeah. as well. Yeah, so that's... Yeah. We got uh, Apple jump in there up a little bit. I think they're they're pushing out their iPhone 11 today. I think uh, Tim Cook was in front of one of the maybe the Manhattan iPhone store. Okay. Uh, they got lines, of course. You know, seeing the headlines. Not that it'll have any really material fact, but there you go. Uh, well, no, I thought that was well. Uh, let's see. Now, lots of headlines for Apple. What is this? Millions iPhone unit, excuse me, warned against upgrading to Apple's iOS 13. <laughs> what is this? Let's see what this is. Okay. So early problems include apps that crash randomly, signal dropping off, and pictures being assigned odd dates and times. So they came out with a new operating system okay. on, on iOS, their operating system. Yep. I have an iPhone. What happens is, is that you'll get notifications that you can download, install. Right. Uh, uh, general consensus is when you get these types of things is to let them sort out for a week yeah, or two. Don't right. don't really um, be so keen to be the first person to download it because there's always issues like this. So what will happen is there will be continual updates right. every night as the programmers at Apple are figuring out now that it's in the, in the masses' hands what's going wrong and they'll get this repaired in a week or two right. or something like so that. So this is iOS 13 and th these you know, computer folks are saying, hey, listen, wait for 13.1. <laughs> right. Yeah. And look, by September 24th, okay. and what are we sitting, is it the 20th right now? So yeah. four days away. That's right. kind of the point, that they're quick updates, and I don't believe that they're usually anything that can destroy your phone or so forth, but you really don't know. I mean, they're new, they're yeah. new pieces of software that get rolled out, and, you know, this is iOS 13, so don't confuse it when they go from 13.1 to 0.2 to 0.2 three to you know those are small those are this is the whole new and they actually have a new operating system for ipads which is the first time that that has been done in a while really and okay. that actually wasn't immediately available with the ios 13 so it seems like that was having even more problems than the ios for the phones 
So maybe they have a few few hiccups that they're working through. A couple of glitches, no doubt. 877 927 6648. Let's go over to the King Dog Amazon, see what's going on. They put their order in for 100,000 vans yesterday. They I had, saw them. And man. you know, the vans, you know what's so cool is that I, I, I guess they have some of these out in the street right now. They, the journal had a picture in the paper, and it's like, it almost looks like the ones they have now. So I don't know if yeah, the ones now are electric or not. But Teslas look just like normal cars, man. It's yeah. just what's under the hood. Right. <laughs> There's no, right. Uh, yeah. So you're trading uh, 1820. We've been here uh, for well, almost a month, right? Yeah, almost you know? a couple of months, going back to yeah. the beginning of August almost. Yeah, and let's see when they wind up again. Okay, October 24th. Hey, that's that's gonna a be month the next... away. I know, I know. And I had, I did see, I had one article up here, where are they? Amazon. So this is an interesting headline. We talk about they're building their own carbon neutral UPS, Bank of America says. Um, so we know they're building out their delivery network, yeah. but they're going to do it one up, man. They're going to do it carbon neutral, um, good, which is great, exactly. And man, tough to compete with Amazon. You better not sleep, folks. Seriously. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights Day, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Meow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 85, Nasdaq's up 11, S&Ps are up 7.5. And, and, you know, each time that uh, you get spikes in oil, it seems that, you know, you always have someone blow up. 
Now, this person did not blow up because of spike of oil, because this is, <laughs> if he hadn't got caught before that, he might be in the, in the money. <laughs> I would, right? right? I was just going to say, he's yeah. probably, kick, so, go ahead, yeah. So the, the headline here is Mitsubishi folks lost $320 million, uh, as a rogue trader, uh, basically, uh, it's pretty amazing. They're saying they disguised them as legitimate hedges. Right. So I wonder how that. You know, it seems like there should be checks and balances in place. Right. Um, exactly. Corporate governance style. He was only just, hired last November. Yeah, so it's not like some 20-year veteran that somehow they gave enough credibility to that right. he had his own accountability. Yeah. You don't want to give people who are with your company less than a year the ability to have $320 right. million dollar losses. And this started, so he got hired in November. He started doing these unauthorized uh, deals in January, and it, he was selling it to China, folks. I'm not quite sure where he was. Oh, he was located in Singapore selling it yes. to China, okay? Now, watch this. This is what's crazy. Tommy and I were just going through this a little bit earlier. Well, well, this one here, this is just a... The rogue trader. Uh, it, top 10. Yeah, top 10. <laughs> so let, let's, let's see. The 1994, look at that one, man. 1.2 billion. This is all oil. Yeah. 2004... I can't even, the first one, I'm not sure how to even. Yeah, metal cell yeah. shaft. Yeah, that was a German company, yes. AG. So 2004, you had a $550 million one. 2007, oh, that's cheap money, $61 million. 81, yeah. Yeah, 81. Uh, 2018, oh, look at this one, 656. That's a blip on the, the radar. Yeah. And then 2019, Petro Diamond. So now yeah. we, we get another one. So what happened here, now this is what's really wild, is that this guy, uh, yeah, he was a guy, okay, um, was bullish. And as the, what did it say, they, they caught on to him uh, when yeah. he went on vacation. That happens a lot, do you know what I mean? Um, you know, you leave, you leave your desk and then all of a sudden someone else comes in and says, holy man, something's not right here. So you know? large losses from derivatives trading yeah. quote, were incurred since July as the price of oil dropped. Yeah. And the unit began an investigation into the transactions in the middle of August when the employee was absent from work. Yeah. Uh, and oil had dropped 16% from its July peak of 67 bucks to a low of 56.23. He only needed a few more days. Not man. mammoth, though, right? Not even mammoth, as in no. you see bigger moves. I mean, they're that, probably saying that they're lucky that oil didn't fall to 45 yeah. before they caught it. Right. Because, man, oh, man. And it's the leverage. That's so the I guess they, to... right, they closed the position once they realized it could result in losses for the company, probably once they realized they could wipe out the whole company if things sure. went bad. Um, and, yeah, they made $6 billion last year, yeah. so they'll be able to incur it, but still, you're talking about, what is that, 5% of their profit overnight just gone. And that would be... I think investors would look at what are the compliances like, you know. I agree. That's right. what I said. I, you know, it's one you thing know, if you're, you hire them and like take it to clean. It's in six one thing months. if, you know, your chief operating officer, your chief something officer just ends up being a bad person that, right. you know, there's only certain things you can do. Somebody is going to be able to be the person that's in control. It shouldn't be the person that's been there for a year. Where is their boss? Where is their check? Like you're saying, um, they're, they're having those meetings, I imagine. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. So, uh, Microsoft yesterday, uh, this thing, man, I mean, this is no doubt been on a tear. They're going to buy $40 billion back. Yep. And, you know, guess what? You're at all-time highs. Yeah. I and mean, they increased their dividend, too, up about a nickel, I yep. think, for up to 51 cents. Um, and you can see the, the, the growth in this company for a monster company is just amazing. It sure is, man. 2020, how about $140 billion in revenue, Look man? Look at that, man. Yeah. I mean, what's staggering is that you go back to just even 2017, they're making 96 billion, not making, earning, earning yeah. for revenue. Revenue. And they just gave back $40 billion to their shareholders. I know. That's 50% of their revenue from 2017. Right. That's how much money they're making. Um, and let's just see. So they're going to make, we'll call it ballpark, $5 a share average between 2019 yep. and 2020. So how much, how many shares they got, man? Well, that's 7.6 billion. Yeah, multiply that times five. So it's basically one year of earnings. They're making 35, 40 billion dollars a year, straight up profit. And they just give it right back, man. What and happened to all that investment? You know, we give them tax breaks. I thought it was all going to be into job creation and not just lining the pockets of yeah. the wealthy shareholders. Yeah, so even, much for that. Not even close. Yeah. And uh, they're growing by 11 percent, folks. They have a they have a <laughs> they have a company that is doing that type of revenue and they're growing i believe 
Yeah, the United States and internationally. 11.4% in the United States, 11.2% internationally. And it's nice. I mean, look at that diversification. 50-50, half in the U.S., half abroad, man. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, man. and I just, uh, their business model, Baz and I were talking about it a little bit yesterday in the show. I mean, it's just, they really turned the company around, man, they with that, that run. I mean, so check out. And, I mean, and, and every, you know what's interesting is that it's not, that, I mean, we use them on that cloud. But it's very inexpensive. I feel like it's inexpensive for what we're getting. Do you yeah, know what I'm I would agree. Yeah. I, was, I was discussing it a bit in terms of, uh, where are we? Are we, on, are we on a 20 year? No, we're not on a 20 year. I'm going to add this. Um, I think it's $99. You get five, up to five licenses for right. a quote unquote family plan. And that includes everything from uh, Outlook, Excel, yeah. PowerPoint. Right. Not to mention, then you have. Uh, as I pull this up, then you have, we'll put it on a monthly, because, man, they went through a time, though. Oh, yeah. Where uh, uh, it was a little dicey. Oh, there's no doubt, man. Uh, the, the move to the, you know, yeah, I look mean, at that. look at, and from 99, right, you're at ballpark in 60 bucks. Yeah. It took you until 2016, 17 years wow. to get back to there, and you had to weather a 75% haircut down to $14. And was that in 2008? This was in two, beginning of 2009, but they, they, their collapse did go from 40, where are we? What's the high up there? Let me get, high of $37 down to 14 from the beginning of basically 2018. So more than cut in half even that year. You but know, it's amazing, man, folks, 14 is that you bucks. can see, you know, when there's no liquidity, you can have great companies, but it matters how much money is chasing how much how much yeah. paper. Yeah, and I don't think know? they were a great company though this year. Yeah. They weren't. I mean, that's where they really transitioned to. They brought in Satya Nadella, yeah, right? They got rid of they the Balmer, yeah, right? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, he was the CEO for many of these years. Oh it's, yeah, it's a tough run, man. Oh yeah. Um, but they really changed things in terms of uh, recurring revenue. Now they have all the Windows notebooks. That I mean, it's not easy just to become. Uh, hardware manufacturer, right. and they did it right. like right. tenfold. So they grind them all down, folks. That's uh, you know, that's, yep. that's that's no doubt a business plan. Yeah. Oh, did you see? So check this out. Stripe. Okay. Two Irish brothers, right? They're gonna basically, they're they're going, and we use Stripe now. When we, uh, you know, uh, they're one of the payment processors yeah. that that. Um, Look at this, man. I mean, these guys sold their first company for $5 million when they were teenagers. A decade later, the startup's valued at $35 billion, yeah. making them Ireland's uh, richest entrepreneurs. So they, 29 to 31. Yeah, so they got a, a net worth of $4.2 billion each. Right. And so they'll make it to the 500. Now, I, I feel like I've seen this headline even already because they've been around for a while they have they have so i guess they just announced they raised an additional 250 million in, right. their, in their recent round that pegs it at 35 billion um but we'll have to look up because i'm pretty sure they've been billionaires for years upon years already yeah no i think they have been now they're yeah. just more billionaires i think they're the richest that's what they put yeah. them even yeah. yeah stay right there folks tommy and i come right back if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
from all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And we were talking about those two brothers. So a year ago, they uh, you had a twenty billion dollar valuation. Now at thirty five. Yes, yeah, so right? I just started googling uh, because I swear I've seen the article, and you know the press they they're going to love to write about two geniuses that are just plowing their way through the financial world. Um, and so being so young, man, in this article, they were twenty eight and thirty. That's when it was valued at twenty billion. It seems like both of them have about twelve percent of the company. It's yeah. so almost twenty five percent between the two of them. And one interesting stat that I saw in here, well, not a household name, which I agree completely. Right. They are kind of used to be put at the pipes of the internet, the pipes of payment processing. Stripe said that as many as 65% of adults will have purchased items through its system in the past year. Because you don't even know, all right? This right. is going to be something literally that I think Amazon was deploying their technology. Right. So it's everywhere. Right. Um, and I'm sure they have competitors that are coming for them right now. But it was $20 billion a year ago. And... Uh, and they're 30 billion plus right now. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, and so we were talking, you know, interest rate structure here. This is pretty cool, folks, because we got the 10-year yield up. It's 1.76 out here today. Yeah. Now that being said, um, you know, you're coming back into this Fed day here. Yes, yeah. it sure is. So, so Fed day, you know, we went from a 1.74 up to a 1.8. Yes. And right in the middle, man. Yeah. Kind of right in the middle, and almost right where we were. When Powell started coming on at 2:30, right? I mean, right. literally almost to the tick, almost where we were. And it's interesting that we're kind of right in the middle of the slide that we saw for the month of August, going from I was just going to say, right, going from two yeah. down to 1.42, back up to 1.9, and we're right in the middle of uh, call it no man's land. Where are we going? We it going is. to two? Or we going to 1.5, man? Right. Pick a side. So let's let's go look overseas and see what we have overseas here. So on the 10-year, France is still at negative two tenths germany five tenths italy oh look at italy italy's positive by nine tenths <laughs> spain's positive by two tenths sweden's negative netherlands are negative switzerland's always the big one now i said to you right as in so you see negative rates in switzerland right, right? so you the common sense would be man money is so cheap it's negative rates in switzerland why don't i go borrow money in switzerland at very cheap rates go put it into a U.S. Treasury, getting 1.7, yeah. and then I'll, may, I'll become a trillionaire overnight by this beautiful arbitrage Spread, that yeah. I've discovered. Right. Problem is, and that's when you pulled up the gold contract, right? right. One of the only country, currencies, you put a dollar in the Swiss, yeah. that gold is not at highs, is the Swiss franc right. and, and the dollar, but stay with the Swiss franc. The reason why that is, if it's not at all-time highs, 
and it is in every other currency. That means the Swiss franc has been a very strong currency compared to the other currencies. So when you see this, right, you can't just go take out money loans in Switzerland, put it into a different yield, because you're going to eventually have to pay that loan back That's right. in francs. Yes. And if the currency continues to strengthen, it's it going to cost you more right. than the arbitrage 2%. Right. And that's why you see some of these. So it kind of brought it home when you showed the gold contract. said, oh, well, you know, that's part of the reason why negative rates in Switzerland, very, very, very strong currency. Yes. Um, but U.S. dollar is the other one there. So, no, it is. so that's where it kind no, of throws off, no, right? U.S. dollar has been very strong as right. well. And we're still yielding 1.7, which right. is remarkable. Yeah, it's... Because they talk about, of course, you know, there's there's hedges that you can buy for those currencies, right. and they're more expensive than the arbitrage there. So yes. be aware of that, you know, as in that's that's where that differential comes in. And you know, when you when you talk about currency hedges and currencies in general, some of the largest blowups of major public companies has been that. Like the banks are so good at talking <laughs> a CFO. Uh, I, I mean, you have to go back to 20 years, but Procter & Gamble had one of the biggest ones. And I always just scratch my head, like, how could a Procter & Gamble, a CFO of Procter & Gamble, you know, buy the currency that, you know, it's almost like, oh, you can't lose money. I mean, that's, that's, how, that's how these things get presented. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's like billions. It's yeah. like billions of dollars. But it is what it is. And, and you know, it, it seems to happen not a lot, but every two or three years when, when a public company blows up, you know, uh, with big money, it seems to be a currency hedge, you know. Gold, let's go take a look at the gold market here and see, you know, Fridays on gold, folks, are always kind of interesting, uh, meaning that these things can really move. Now, we don't have a lot of movement out here this morning, but as we get closer to the end of the day, I expect we're going to, because we had a range last night of, uh, what is that? Like uh, 15, 14. Yeah, 15, uh, 10 buck range. I guess it's not that big. Yeah, even $8. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see where that baby wants to shake yeah. out. Yeah. The, um, see if we just trail off into the close. It's been pretty tame after the Fed meeting. It, for, it's, you know? it's sideways market. Yeah. Each time, well, what the S&Ps did yesterday, the S&Ps got to an all-time high and couldn't hold price. The... Uh, NDX 100 failed on price and volume. So let's just go see if the S&P did it again. I'm just going to use the SPY just so we can see whether it went up there quickly. I'll, I'll put the futures up in a second, but uh, oh no, not even close. Yeah, interesting. Oh, you know what? They must have paid a dividend. Hold it. Is this dividend day too? That's kind of, that's kind of weird. Do you see what's going on there? So we're up 61 cents, but yet this is always tricky when they pay a dividend. I don't know if they paid the dividend today because you can see Yesterday you're at 302.63 here. I'm going to do the futures. Sure. Right? Yeah. So in the futures, oh, we're still on the U. This is a little, no, we're not. I think you're right. Yeah. No, one of the U? The no. Z. That was Z. Okay. Right. What do you have up there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, oh, they see, they never hit that. Interesting. They, okay. So I got to do the, oh, let me do the cash. So this is pretty cool, folks, what, what just happened here. So first I, first I did the SPY and question whether the dividend came out. Then I, did, then I did yep. the futures. Yep. That's like that, the futures hadn't even made it to the July high. Then I did the cash. The, now, the cool thing here is, is oh, thanks, man. CZ, it is the ex-dividend today. That would make sense. It's I mean, a it's big a big deal. difference on yep. the ETF. All right. Because the, go ahead, yeah. So, so now this is cool. Because you should be also looking at the cash. And the cash, we haven't broken the high. The yes. cash, 3,027 was the high that was generated out here on the 29th of July. Your next shot at trying to get to the high was September 12th, which is 3,020. Yesterday, we got to 3,021.99 and then closed at 3,006. So that would be the failure to hold price. And we'll see how this baby shakes out today. Yeah, so sideways movement. We will get volume into the close today, that's for sure. You and know. How about oil? I was just going to jump yeah. on because, man, we got some action in oil. I was looking at the chart, and I'm sure this has to do with, you know, a lot of headlines out there even this morning right now, right, in terms of um, look at that pop in oil. So even since 9 o'clock, man, and I think we got some news driving this market, but we trade from 58.65. Yeah. These are five-minute bars we're looking at. You spike up to 59.22, 
And then from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m., you fall 80 cents, and then we're right back in the middle of that range at 58.74. And so I had seen a couple articles so that it was a sophisticated attack, dramatic impact on the global markets. I know we're going to break. Is this the one? Because they were saying there could have been... Uh, Okay, some damage, but I saw them talking about that the uh, those rebels might have had some help. You see them talking about in the dens and uh, had, maybe no. some insiders over in Saudi Arabia. Maybe the few of them that were locked up in the Ritz. A little unhappy oh, with what's going on yeah. over there. Some insiders in turmoil. I can see that. Totally. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I'm I come sure right back. You are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow up 62. The Nasdaq uh, is down one. S&Ps are up seven. You want to watch that Nasdaq, folks? I was uh, say negative. That, yeah, that and the X100 and the Nasdaq can take this baby south. Uh, you know, we were just talking about that oil market. I guess uh, you know it's moving around quite a bit. What we do do have when we were looking at this is that you get a lot of pitches coming out of the Middle East because they're giving tours over there right now, evidently. To, yeah, uh, some. I'm, and I'm going to try and scroll up. So here's, you know, one of their big towers over here, um, installation, you know, damage everywhere. And yeah. so I think that kind of maybe that spike was kind of for the first time getting a glimpse of the dramatic damage in the market right. saying, whoa, 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 and you saw the spike. 
Um, and the amount of, uh, it said that 18 different places inside of that yeah, were hit, uh, right? facility was, was getting hit. That's, they had 25 drones and missiles. There was two waves of attacks. They started putting out the fires yeah. immediately. And then the second wave, they had 200 people on site. So right. it wasn't like an abandoned, you know, and of course right. it's not abandoned. But there are plenty of people there. And maybe that's part of the reason you got a huge spike and then pull back. But oil pretty, pretty muted right back to where you've been trading at for the most of the day. Right. And I was going to mention, so you did, we talked about that Gold Report webinar you did Wednesday night talking about gold versus all those currencies and you can still sign up that archive is available right when you sign up on your members page um, subscribers out there you can access it right now over the weekend and if you want to check it out that archives available on your members page when you sign up and a new issue coming out for the gold report and you just had an update yesterday with a new buy in there as right. well which right. is uh, which is still available for subscribers there's action and we'll see how much action we're gonna get into the, uh, this close and that uh, you know, we haven't had the dollar fall apart yet. That's the real bottom line. Interest rates are with us in, in, inside that metal market. There's no doubt about that. Still with us. And I'm just going to point out NASDAQ negative, but you have Apple up a dollar. So what else is going in that yeah. NASDAQ to be negative? No doubt. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. Uh, we got uh, TD Ameritrade coming up next. Then we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Well, go get him, folks.